All right, I'm 100% a machinist now. I have figured out how to jog this thing, left, right, up, down, side, side, all that. Figured out how to turn the coolant on, and I've turned how to, learned how to turn the spindle on. All right, folks, first movement. Finally take that little block out of there. Yay! Looks like it works! I want to try and turn the coolant on. I don't know anything what I'm doing with Path Pilots, so it's going to be a learning curve. I got my book out, that's the key. Except I'm not reading it. Coolant. Well, that's not very exciting. I hear a relay click, but nothing else. Hmm. Quick note on the spindle. You'll see this key here. It has to be in there and in the on position. That's a spindle lockout. Um, I came up to it and there was no key in there. And I started freaking out like maybe Maybe I uh, threw it away in my packaging and everything because I'm like, there's no key. I can't find it anywhere. I tried this little key and I had a bunch of these little like cabinet keys. None of them fit. So I went on the forums and someone's like, hey, check that little toolbox they gave you. And sure enough, open that up and there's some random junk and there happened to be actually another key. So I think that might be a spare to the main electronics cabinet. But either way, my key was in there and I'm happy because without the key, there's no chips. So yeah, at this point, you can jog it. Up on this big panel over here, I've got my coolant now set to auto. That's the reason why it didn't turn on before, it was just off. So if you click this sucker to on, it just goes. See? So that's off, then you go auto. Now auto is relying on the computer to tell it. So if I click coolant on the computer, there she goes. I can turn it off. There we go. And then, yep, spindle I actually haven't even done on the computer yet. I gotta figure that out, but you got a manual. So right now I've got my spindle set in manual. Here we got manual, so we'll hit start. You can hear it start going. And then you can hit stop. Forward, reverse. That all works. I'll figure out how to get it going on path pilot here. All right, so this is pretty exciting. I've got the mill up and running. At this point, I'm gonna try and make my first part. It's a really simple part. It's, made, it's really just a little um, flat cut out piece with a hole in it. So no big deal um, to start with. I've got this chunk of aluminum here. It's eighth inch thick, just with a piece of wood under it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just surface that down on this side and then flip it over. And then I will um, machine the other surface to the right thickness and then um, cut the outline. It'll be two little parts. So this first little portion I'm cheating and I'm just manually jogging the machine to surface it. I didn't feel like writing, writing cam for it. But then the other portion will have G-code going to it to cut the two pieces out. Yeah, that one didn't even touch so I'm going to go down a little bit. Go down 10 foul.
Well, there it is. Hopefully the splash zone wasn't where the camera is. Nope, looks like we're pretty good. Pretty dry over here. So that's a nice finish. That's actually a really terrible end mill. It's chipped on like two of the four flutes. So I am actually really happy how that came out. And I'm amazed at the difference in the sound of this machine because if I went to do that on the old little Sieg back here, where is it? There it is, the old Sieg. That thing would have been chattering away. I tried using that half inch end mill. That's how I broke it. It's because I, I crashed the machine using that end mill. And it didn't take much. It was probably about that deep. It wasn't even that fast of a cut. And the, the motor couldn't take it on the Sieg. So this is pretty awesome. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, the ends that I was holding from off just so that um, when I flip it over it'll be flat and then I'll go ahead and machine the actual part. Alright, there is the very first cut on my mill. So I know it's not lined up or anything but I'm actually going to cut a very small chunk out of this so I think this will be fine. I flipped the part over and you are about to witness my first attempt at a CNC controlled operation. All it's going to be is facing um, the plate right here. So, let's get it on. Wow, that got a little moist. <laughs> I've got all my junk over here because I was too cheap to buy the little keyboard, little mounting arm for like 250 bucks. So I'm gonna make a little little bracket, but right now I got all my junk sitting over here because I don't have any USB extension cords. So my computer's down below. And man, she just got soaked. So that's not that much coolant split, spitting out of there, I didn't think, but holy cow. So it looks like right here I've got an edge. I'm not sure if that's from the coolant being turned off. I had to just turn it off at one point. I said that's enough. I'm getting soaked. Um, yeah, other than that, it's got to be from, that was like right when I turned the coolant off because the first run was really nice and then the second run sucked. As far as coolant goes, I just realized here that there's a little valve. So turn that down. The coolant's not splashing like everywhere anymore, just kind of everywhere. Um, I also went ahead once that was done and re-ran that program to take off that little burr that I was talking about right here So it's a lot nicer now next up. I've got an eighth inch drill bit um, Hoping it does okay um, I'm not very proficient right now with figuring out like drill bit feeds and speeds and better with end mills at this point So I think I got it. Okay. I'm gonna run it slower where you can crank it down uh, over here on the feed so that's going to be my plan for this one and if it looks like it's doing okay then I'll speed it back up to 100% but for now I'll leave it like probably like 50% just to try and get the, the hole drilled. It's not very deep and it's not very big so, so that's the plan. <laughs>
No drama there, I like that. So while I'm here thinking about it too, um, I typically leave the defaults on for, oh geez, now I gotta remember all my terminology, feed height and all that kind of stuff. So right now the machine's going fairly quick down to like, I think it's 200 thou, so a little under a quarter inch next to the part. While I'm new, I'm probably gonna go into my settings in Fusion 360 and change that so it's like a solid inch and then it slowly comes to the part. That way you know um, right when you, right when it hits that inch, like you've got a decent amount of time to hit that stop button before something plunges into the material um, if, if it's not right. All right, last tool for this uh, little part or parts is gonna be just an eighth inch flat uh, or square end mill. And it's just going to barely waller out these holes. That's the technical term for ream. Ream is kind of a country term, so waller's the correct one. And then it'll go around and cut the outline. I did leave a, uh, I think it's three thousandths um, offset off the bottom of the part. That way I'm hoping that the part doesn't flop up or anything. And I just for safety, I also left, I think it's like, a, I think it's a sixteenth of an inch tall uh, I left four little tabs on there, so I know it's not going to go anywhere, but I also wanted to try out just leaving a little bit of material and seeing how it cleans up and everything. I figured this is a good part to try that on. So there they are. Um, I'm kind of regretting not going a little bit deeper and it may have been how I touched off because I'm trying to use the old piece of paper technique and this wood is soaked and so I'm having a lot of trouble getting an accurate tool depth. Uh, when you feel it you can see a pretty good ridge. Just looking at visually it you can barely even tell I cut into it. So I may just um, offset the tool like a couple more thou and run this again. There we go, I went down another like six thou. And you can actually see on that right one that it punched through a little bit. So I am happy with that. I'm gonna pull it off and pop these little baby parts out. This is how it came off of the mill after I just brushed it off and everything. So I think that looks pretty good. And you can kind of see like these parts are ready to just pop out of here. Um, I'm not gonna do it with my hands because I don't want my hand to go through there and then cut myself but you can see it's going to take very little effort so let's grab a uh, um, deburring tool yeah you can see it's just coming right out of there uh, except oh, there it went right through the little tabby too so that was pretty good it's probably not the proper way to use a deburring tool but you know so the first little guy's out now it's just going to be a matter of not cutting myself. And if I did cut myself, I don't think I'd put it on my video, sorry. Yeah, it's mainly just how small this part is. I'll probably need to grab a pair of pliers or something to hold onto it while I deburr it. As far as the edges though, well I guess this one was already broken. Yeah, this one already went all the way through. I was going to say there's really not a big burr or anything where I left material. All that work tonight for these cute little pieces. Check them out. Ta-da! Aren't they cute? They're little tiny pieces. So, turned out pretty good. So I do want to say that I am super happy with this, um, happy I got it, and it is amazing to see what, well, to actually operate a real milling machine. <laughs> um, just how it handled the cuts, how nothing wanted to vibrate, it sounded completely different. 
Um, the coolant was awesome, I thought, except for how messy it is. So I will totally be doing the bootstrap version of a enclosure and going over and getting a shower curtain and some PVC pipe probably and getting this so that it doesn't destroy my whole garage and leave me soaked every time I try to run something. But other than that, I am super excited and uh, this is the simplest, smallest little piece on this first order I've got. So it's done. I've got two more pieces i got to make for it and then it'll be shipping. So hopefully um, in about a week it'll be out the door. I don't think I'll have time to make that whole order this week um, before the video goes up, but I have permission to make a YouTube video about it. And so look forward to that in the next week or two. And that's it for this week. I will see you later.